We were looking at birthdays yesterday. Uh, you know, Elvis Presley turned would have been 80 years of age yesterday. And then Paulie goes, you know who's going to turn 80 uh, on Friday? And I go, hmm. He goes, Dick Enberg. And I go, Dick Enberg is going to be 80? And I thought, man, what a career. He's a young 80. And, and I said this when I started to do Sports Jeopardy. I, I did it with really that feeling of sports challenge that Dick Enberg did back in the 70s. And, of course, uh, many, many years calling all the big events. And uh, happy birthday, Dick Enberg. Well, thank you, Dan. It's very kind of you <laughs> to send those wishes. I, I, I was looking at an old Mark Twain quote that the two most important days in one's life are the day you're born and the day you discover why. And I think I've got the latter part <laughs> figured out. <laughs> Your first paying broadcasting job was what? A dollar an hour at WCEN, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I applied for the custodial job. It paid a dollar an hour. The general manager said, Enberg, you've got a nice voice. Threw me into a little studio, gave me a five-minute news summary and a couple of commercials and said, read. I said, don't I get to look it over first? He said, no, just read. Let's see. Called me back in uh, three weeks, and he said, you have the job. I said, where's the broom closet? He said, no, you're our new weekend disc jockey. I said, how much? A dollar an hour. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, the oddest sports event you've ever called. Well, probably um, I'm trying to make uh, uh, some kind of noise in Los Angeles when I moved out from uh, Indiana after entering my doctorate, and I thought I was a pretty good announcer. I'd been doing the Indiana football and basketball games, so anything, uh, any sport that was available, I I claimed I could do it, and uh, KTTV in Los Angeles said, we need someone to call the USC Oh, UCLA water puller. I didn't even know how you got horses in the pool. <laughs> and I said, I could do it. And uh, yeah, we, Roy Sari, the uh, All-American swimmer, was my color man, and we pulled it off. Uh, how many years did you do UCLA basketball? Nine years, and they won eight national titles. Boy, was I a good announcer. <laughs> <laughs> but did you, did you understand at the time what you're, what you're watching there with the Bruins with John Wooden? You know, you just, uh, I was young and excited about being with a team that seemed to win. Um, uh, well, the, let's see, in the nine years at home, they were, I think, 169 and two. And, and so we became spoiled by what became the Bruin Ballet and the eight national titles and, and, of course, rubbing shoulders with, other than my father, the greatest man I've ever known, John Wooden. And, uh, and when you look back on it in the 1968 UCLA Houston game in the Astrodome and the 88 game streak being broken by Notre Dame. Those were really significant significant sports uh, moments in history. And, and at the time, you just kind of went on to the next assignment, Dan, and now you look back and say, wow, how fortunate was I? Well, I, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Dick, but didn't, uh, when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went to UCLA, Lou Alcindor, as a freshman, he couldn't play, but did the freshman team beat the varsity team that had just won the national title? That's correct. Uh, he uh, <laughs> was not eligible until a sophomore, and that was a, a storied game where they brought the, the varsity returnees against the freshman team, and that freshman team, of course, had gone on and win three national titles. And there again, the, the intersection of good fortune in my life that I had just signed on at Gene Autry's TV station the year before they decided to call the games, and the first telecast of UCLA basketball that I did, and I flew solo, I didn't have a color man, was the first game that Luella Sender played as well. a Bruin, and uh, you talk about the good fortune of life. I've, I've been more than privileged. No, he's the greatest college player of all time. I, 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 uh, I, maybe I, the greatest of all time. Of all, you know, when you think about what he did as a high school player, as a college player, and as a, a professional player, you can make the argument that he was the best ever. I'm talking to Dick Enberg, the uh, great sportscaster. I, I mentioned sports uh, jeopardy that I've been doing now, but uh, when you did sports challenge, and that's when I first knew who Dick Enberg was. You know, I'm in Ohio, but I remember you know those loud uh, plaid sport coats that you would wear. And, <laughs> but you just yeah, you were like a. Did you want to be a game show host? No, no, no. I happened. To, they happened to shoot those at KTLA, uh, Gene Autry Station, and I was the new sportscaster there. And uh, Jerry Gross was the producer and asked me if I'd like to be uh, be the MC. And it was more not to be a game show host, but my chance to rub shoulders with all these Hall of Famers. I mean, you, can, you can't really name anyone in that era alive of Hall of Fame status that wasn't on the show. And we, I think, paid them 300 whatever the minimum was, $300 <laughs> a, a show. Can you imagine? But today? you had big names there, Dick. Like, all of them. 
<laughs> all of them. I mean, and the, and the joy, Dan, was uh, they they seemed to enjoy being with other greats. And we had a green room, and and uh, we'd do three shows a day. So whoever lost in the first show, they'd hang around the green room, <laughs> and the same for the second show. So by the end of the day, we had fifteen uh, sports greats all in one place, all having a libation and telling stories. And Joe DiMaggio would be talking to Joe Lewis, and uh, Johnny Unitas uh, would be chasing down Bronco Nagurski, and and here. As a young man, I was the fly on the wall, able to uh, hear these great stories and be able to associate with with them on whatever basis that might be. Never asked for a single autograph. Oh, that was my next question. Are you a memorabilia guy? What have you collected over the years? Well, really, uh, I, I'm not a big memorabilia guy. I, I, I think that uh, there's some letters that have been special and some awards uh that are meaningful and are in my den. Um, I think the the joy of my uh, 60 years in the business has been the people with whom I've worked. And uh, I tried uh, this morning to think about those in the various sports, and it's something like 20 different Hall of Famers in various sports that were at my side, and, and uh, they became friends. And... Um, I mean, from Don Drysdale to Al and Billy, and you know, I was thinking about being 80 years old. Al, when he was reaching uh, into the 70s, said, Dixie, where's the time going? He says, I <laughs> feel like I'm having breakfast every 20 minutes. <laughs> and that, and it's no easier at 80. Where does the time go it's by? Amazing. Didn't we just celebrate the millennium? Yeah. Uh, did you ever call an Ali fight? Yes, I did. We uh, In Munich in, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think, it was 19... 19- in the 1970s, early 70s, he fought Richard Dunn, a Welchman. Uh, the fight uh, in Munich was at 3 in the morning. It may, no, 2 in the morning because of the five-hour uh, time difference so that they, it could come, uh, air at 9 o'clock live in uh, in New York. And, and Ali uh, knocked him out in the seventh round, eighth round. It was a good, it was a good battle, and, and uh, Dunn landed some terrific punches. And I'll never forget, Ali invited me to sit in his limousine after his final road work out in the Munich countryside. Beautiful scene. And here we were on a country road, and hundreds of people just appeared. And uh, the word uh, apparently uh, was out that uh, Lee was in the area, and here I'm riding after he finished in the car with his manager and trainers and his entourage and uh, driving through the you know, beautiful Bavaria uh, with the great champion Ali. And he, uh, I had a little tape recorder with me, and he said, turn that on. Someday your grandchildren are really going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you keep it? It's somewhere. Yeah, it is somewhere. And, and when I have a couple of years to go through all the tapes that I've saved, I, and hopefully I'll be able to locate it. What do you think Ali would be like today if he was able to talk? Well, he'd be on television, wouldn't he? Or on radio, he would be uh, uh, a treasured uh, member of any telecast. I mean, he uh, he was extraordinarily bright and sensitive and uh, I'm talking with a friend of his, Tim Shanahan, who's writing his memories about Ali. He's known him from the very start, and uh, you know the you know the stories are uh, you know better than any Hollywood uh, scriptwriter or screenwriter could could uh, manufacture. And I, yeah, that's a good question. I, if he were still 25, he'd still be champion. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, what was it about tennis that I don't know if it brought out the best in you, but it it appeared to I don't know. There was just something about that that was different than the other sports you called. You know, that's interesting. I, you know, I walk in a in a strange city, and no one comes up to me and says, "Gee, we miss you in uh, college basketball," or "We really miss you in the NFL." Or, uh, but they all so often they'll say, "Gee, we missed you at Wimbledon. We missed you at the U.S. Open." And yeah. I don't know whether it's the sport that fit my style or my voice or my passion. Um, I, I tried to play. I mean, I grew up on a farm where the nearest tennis court was 15 miles away, and if my dad had seen me with a tennis racket, he would have used me to club me back into the back 40. But uh, yeah, the people, uh, again, with whom I worked, you know, Bud Collins took my hand and led me around Wimbledon. And of all the events I've done, Wimbledon is my favorite event. Uh, baseball is the best sport, the most challenging sport to call. And uh, and then to work with John McEnroe and Chris Everett and then uh, Tracy Austin and uh, Mary Carrillo as as the time went on. Uh, it, uh, apparently the sport just uh, fit uh, my style. And I think Wimbledon, being such an incredibly special place, uh, just conjures up 
um, essays. And, and I think when you write an essay, you write from your heart, at least I do. I mean, I, if I didn't like something, I'd be a terrible writer. But if I fall in love with something and I'm passionate about it, I think I can put a subject and verb together. And, and, uh, and, and Wimbledon uh, was the... Uh, was was the well the center court uh, uh, the cathedral really brought out uh, uh, all my emotions and and and, uh, and I miss not going back. Are you worried about stop working? Well, it's, uh, I'll do 140 uh, Padre games coming up, and I'm really excited about wh- what uh, you guys are making moves, managers. Dick. Oh, we've got a team. I mean, last year, let's think about this: 11 games behind the Giants for the wild card spot, and they had the worst hitting team in baseball. Now they've got some hackers. They're going to they're going to break the bricks off that left field uh, Western Metal Supply Company building, and uh, they're going to score some runs. They've kept the pitching intact. You know, you're in a tough uh, division with the Dodgers and Giants, and and the D-backs and Rockies. But uh, I think uh, the Padres are going to contend this year, and that's going to make the announcers so much better. <laughs> <laughs> How impressive is Vin Scully? Well, he's the poet laureate of our baseball profession. Uh, still has his fastball, and he's got a pretty nasty curveball as well. Uh, he, uh, if if anyone wants to uh, uh, emulate a, a star in our profession. Just uh, get out some radio play-by-plays of Ben Scully and, and listen to how he's able to weave uh, stories that, while painting the canvas with the action that he's watching. He's, uh, he's been an inspiration, and, and the fact that he's continuing on, uh, he, he's reached the octogenarian uh, phase. In fact, today I'm, I want to try to call uh, the, those that I know are in their 80s and still alive. I, I want to try to reach Bud Collins. I want to tr- uh, contact Keith Jackson and, and Vin as well if they answer the phone. Just because on this day, as I think about a milestone in my life, I, I would like to see how each of them are doing. Happy birthday, Dick. Thank you for uh, the memories and uh, many more. Dan, you're very kind. Thank you. All right. Dick Enberg.